Hi, everybody. My name is Grace Weather, and I'm 15 years old. Growing up, I was a super active child. If any of you guys have kids of your own, you know what the word active means. I got in trouble in school a lot, but mainly for things like choreographing dance numbers in the middle of math class or directing a film in the middle of English. No matter what it was, I always wanted to be creating something new. I was a figure skater and with the help of my team would soon become a world champion in the synchronized figure skating division. And after I decided that I had conquered figure skating, what did I know? I was nine. <laughs> but I set out on my next big adventure. I thought about it for a while and then I got an idea. I'm going to join the circus. So I did. This is me on a triple trapeze, hanging by my toes, 30 feet in the air, at age 11. And after circus, I would go on to be an actress, and a writer, and a poet, and basically anything else creative you can think of. This is our life. And as you see, our life is a circle. Our life is made up of two things, events and decisions. As you see, the circle goes both ways. An event can force you to make a decision, and a decision can cause a strand of events. Unfortunately, the little girl you saw in those videos didn't feel well. I was tired, sick, and worst of all, I started losing passion for the things that I loved. In a way, I started losing myself. I was taken to countless doctors, and they would say things like, she's depressed, she's a teenager, and worst of all, she's making it up for attention. I was not depressed, I was not just a teenager, and I was certainly not making it up for attention. One day, my mom, who knows me better than anyone else, decided that we should go to the ER and have me checked for mono. It had been going around my school and I had some of the symptoms, but they very quickly realized that I didn't have mono. They looked into it a little bit more and they saw that I had some weird blood work, where they sent me to the Children's Hospital of Minneapolis and I was checked into the oncology department. It was there they told me that they thought I might have leukemia. They very quickly realized that I did not have leukemia, but they would spend the next six months of my life trying to figure out why I had all these symptoms for leukemia, but I didn't actually have leukemia. One of the doctors proposed an idea of an MRI of my spine and my head. It took a lot of time to convince me because if any of you have ever had an MRI, you know it's not the most pleasant experience in the world, but finally I agreed and they made the appointment. It was January 9th, 2015. I was 13 years old. I was in math class and I got the little slip that said my mom was here to pick me up. I got in the car and we drove to the hospital, a place I had become way too familiar with. We went through the procedure of the MRI and after I put on my PE clothes, I was headed off to gym class and we were doing the dance unit, which of course was my favorite. But I wouldn't make it to gym class that day. We drove up to the front of the school and through the glass windows, I could see the receptionist. Then my mom's phone rang. It was a short call, no more than five, ten seconds, and I prepared to get out of the car. But the car didn't stop. We kept driving past the school, down the street, down the highway, and back up to the front door of the hospital. Once inside, my mom would be taken one way, and I was taken to a cabana basically a three-walled room. There, a nurse would take my blood pressure, weigh me, and measure how tall I was, even though she had done it just a couple hours earlier. Then she asked me a question, a question that still confuses me to this day. On a scale of one to 10, how much pain are you in right now? Now think about it. You've been sitting for a while, so you're probably not the most comfortable, but you're not bleeding, so you're fine, right? For the past six months of my life, people have been telling me that I was making up my pain. Was I? Was I really just a one and it was all in my head? Unfortunately, it was the opposite situation. I had been feeling the pain for so long that I had started to numb it. 
after the nurse took down her notes, I looked up. A five, I guess. An answer that had become robotic to me. We headed off to a room, and not long after that, my mom would join me. She acted like everything was fine. She even smiled. But it was a smile someone gave when you could tell how they had been crying. And not long after that, a doctor came in, a new one, one I didn't recognize, and she logged into her computer and she showed me a picture. That day, I would be diagnosed with a brainstem glioma, which is a tumor inside the brainstem. I don't really remember the rest of the day. It was as if I was dreaming, but I knew one thing. I didn't have control over this event that had happened to me, but it was time to make a decision. So I set out on my next crazy adventure, which for me was Los Angeles, California. I've been passionate about modeling and acting for a long time, but I decided that it was finally time to pursue it as a full-time career. And with the help of my mom, I moved to LA, and here I am, two years later, working with companies that preach individuality, like Teen Vogue, the Project for Girls, and the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Companies that show girls it's okay to be your true self, no matter your situation or illness that you are going through. When I started my talk, you saw the words, the day that changed my life forever. You're probably hoping that it wouldn't be a negative one. And as I started speaking, you probably concluded that it was. But I would have to disagree. Though one of the hardest things I've ever gone through being diagnosed was one of the most positive things that has ever happened to me because it forced me to do the things that I love now. We don't have control over the events that happen to us. But the control to make decisions, it's all up to us. And deciding to do the things that we love and go for our goals now, well, it might just save us. Thank you.